Hey guys, welcome to Sugar on Sunday. And boy, I'll tell you, I have an amazing, amazing story to share with us today. And this one goes back probably 3,500, maybe even 4,000 years. But boy, the modern day implications that this has is truly massive. And you just think about what we're going to talk. It is going to really blow the doors off of your expectations. I genuinely believe that. Now, before we get started, I want to say, hey, sorry I didn't get out there with a sad Saturday question and answer. Judy and I were just, you know, we had something to do all day and it took us the whole day to get it all done, literally. By the time we got home, we were so exhausted that had to pass. But guys, I'll tell you what, during the week, we are definitely going to be answering questions. And for those of you that have sent me out some emails and things like that, I'm going to try and get to all of them today, as many of them as I can for sure. But guys, I'll tell you what I'm about to talk about today. Truly, truly amazing. And it involves three people. These three people, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were living at a time in the world when absolute, there was total chaos. And in fact, you know, it was during that Babylonian empire period. And most people had lost so many of their freedoms and all of this kind of stuff that was going on at the time, because of course the Babylonian empire had taken you know, control of practically the whole known world. And there was a lot of kind of, you know, political, you know, infighting and corruption, of course, going on with all the various factions and stuff like that. And this story comes out of that time. And it's truly amazing just to kind of set it up. So these guys were absolutely, what happened is Babylon came in, of course, they had taken over Jerusalem, Israel, and all that. And what they did is they took the finest of the people, the young people. This was a method they had to incorporate the cultures into the system that they had. So what they would do, they take all their young men, young women, stuff like that, and they would bring them into their own courts. And of course, they would school them and all this kind of stuff. And these guys that they had, this, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the names that they actually gave to them after they were, you know, brought in and, you know, into that captivity. The thing is, these guys were only about 17, maybe anywhere from 16 to 19 years old. They were not like really old white bearded men or anything like that. But what was going on at the time was a lot of these, you know, the kings at the time, and it was Nebuchadnezzar who was the king back then. They literally wanted to, you know, a way in which to kind of reinforce their control was to practically deify themselves. And what Nebuchadnezzar does is he builds this massive, massive idol image of himself made out of gold, overlaid with all gold and everything like that. And the command basically was, look, when you hear all this music playing, da, 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 no matter what you're doing, you are to bow down and you're to worship this image and things like that. Now you think about that in the modern day. Look at all the things that people are basically ha are, are out there worshiping all these idols, you know, and all these, you know, big superstars and things like that. And of course, the philosophy of the society at the time. That's kind of what we're living in right now. Now, listen to what went down. For those of you who know the story, you're going to get a good glimpse. But there's stuff in here that, you know, is really quite amazing and that we can employ in our own lives to see some tremendous results. Now, we're reading out of Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 3. And we're going to start at verse 8. So we've got the setup of what the story is. Now, this is what it says, starting at verse 8. And we're just going to read down here a few verses. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forth and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the harp, the lyre, and the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the gold image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Like we say, they would take these people, these young men and the educated ones. And of course, they would employ them in their civil service and put them over various affairs. And that's what they're talking about. And they named them. They said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. 
These men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image that you have set up. Now, having let's just stop right there. How many situations have you been in or have you seen happen where people are absolutely being falsely accused, you know, and in and, and the aspect of, well, not necessarily, because these guys weren't being falsely accused. What they accused them of was absolutely true, but it's the way in which they did it, the motive behind the accusation. You see, the motive behind the act, they, did, they could care less, really, whether they, these guys were bowing down the gold image. What they were really talking about is the jealousy of that they had towards them because they hated the fact that they were given recognition when they felt that they should have had it and not these guys. That was is what really was going down. And so here they're looking for an opportunity to do them in. Now, guys, ask yourself a question. Do we have any parallels for that? happening right now where people get absolutely dragged up and stuff like this and the motivation behind it is not justice it is not justice it's about jealousy and destruction have you ever been victimized like that you know the political world where the glass ceiling at work and stuff like that and you put in all this kind of effort yet you know you got people competing with you and this and that how about in relationships where you've got you know maybe a group of friends and some some in the group don't like some in the other group and so you know all that goes on we know that this is something that is in the hearts of people it happens all the time look at this space that we're in people you know kind of you know trashing this guy and trashing that one over there because hey they you know they don't want to see them actually succeed and you know they disagree and this and that and so they just tear each other apart well that was what was going on now listen to what happens here because they've influenced you know Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach Meshach and Abednego so they brought these men before the king now listen to what Nebuchadnezzar has to say Nebuchadnezzar spoke saying to them is it true Shadrach Meshach and Abednego that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image that I have set up what he was really saying is have is it true that you are not acquiesce you're not gonna bow your knee when you know this is this is what we this is how we enforce our rule over here and get people to acknowledge hey there's no other government or anything else around that you are going to turn to this is it da, 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 and put all your hope in that and so listen to what he says he says now if you're ready get this at 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 the time you hear the sound of the horn the flute the harp the lyre the psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music and you fall down and worship the image which i have made good but if you do not worship you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning fiery furnace and who is the god who will deliver you from my hand guys have has anybody ever tried to convince you tempt you to compromise your integrity to compromise your values and say hey if you do this fine you know we'll let it go da 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 but if you don't i'm telling you what you're gonna be out that door so fast you won't even know what you know what hit you kind of thing and stuff like that and this is where this is the constitution of who you are inside yourself nobody can give you integrity and by the way no one can take it away oh can they threaten you sure they can can they hurt you sure they can there is a cost for integrity to be sure do you know what most people out there look what just happened when we had all this going on if you weren't willing to capitulate to the to the to the the, the majority view you took an opposing view. Wow, were you ever going to get sidelined? You were going to get absolutely ostracized from society, excommunicated, you know, from your community, on and on and on. And they literally were going to make you suffer because you would not comply. This, guys, is where we have to get out there and you have to decide, hey, what's the constitution of my character going to be? Is my integrity for sale? Is there a cost to it? Yes, there is. And I'll tell you what, I know that Judy and I, and I know other people as well, paid the high price of the cost of their integrity and their conviction. And guys, this world is tempting us as every turn to give up on our values and our integrity. You don't even have to leave your own home to get that. You just have to turn on the tube and it's right there, right? I mean, they enter the things that entertain us, what we allow into our mind, how they pollute us with all kinds of various ideas. You can't even you know, have common debate. Because if you do, you're at risk, right? 
of offending. Offending. Can you imagine just having a different point of view cause such offense that you can't even be heard anymore? That is the decimation of free speech, isn't it? And guys, without the freedom to be have your own convictions and things like that, you really are a captive of whatever that society is going, you know, and stuff like that. And didn't they used to call that peer pressure? Well, it's a whole lot more than pressure now because it's punitive, isn't it? If you don't capitulate, you might lose your job. Hey, you might lose your friends. Hey, you might not even be able to, you know, do some of the things that you could normally do because, hey, your social credit score isn't as high as what it was, should be because you're not acquiescing to all that kind of stuff. Well, integrity has a cost. Listen to how these guys responded to him. And he says this, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. Our minds are already made up. We're not for sale. Listen to what they said. He says, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But even if he doesn't, let we want you to know, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image that you have set up. Boy, I'll tell you what, what courageous response to have in a situation like that. I mean, they had seen people being brutally executed. Don't kid yourself. And here they knew that this guy's not fooling. He is literally going to fulfill his word. It is going to cost me and exactly the price that he said it was going to cost. But if that's the case, fine. I'm willing to pay it because I'm not going to be for sale. Now, guys, I'll tell you what, a lot of times we're going through hardship and trouble and it looks like things are going from bad to worse, doesn't it? We feel like, well, look, you know, it, it does it pay to really serve God? Because, you know, he said he would do this and that. He said, you know, or at least we think that's what, and, and, but he do, doesn't come through or appears he doesn't come through. And our attitude is, well, as long as God keeps doing what I want him to do, then fine. I'll, I'll love him. I'll serve him. I'll, I'll this or that. But these guys said, even if he doesn't, you see, they put the choice. They realized who they are and whose they are, you know, and that's the thing. You know, even Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble, but don't be overcome because I've overcome the world. That's the mindset we have to have. Absolutely. Did God stop being loving and kind? Because, of course, we didn't get what we thought we wanted or needed and things like that. God knows best. And look, the majority of your life, my life, is going to be spent outside of this body than it is going to be spent in it. And that's the thing. Look, we're not guaranteed a pain-free life. That's a fact, Jack. Have we all not shed tears? I know I have. We all not gone through hardship, you know, some pain and some sorrow? Of course we have. And, you know, even God himself did. I remember I used to write a lot of poetry and I was going through a terrible, terrible, terrible divorce. And I remember I was in my mind, you know, I was thinking of, uh, you know, how they, you know, you'd have those big, nice Russian Ukrainian breads and they would look like cakes. And I saw this image of one broken out with some oil going in. And I was saying, wow, beautiful. And you know what? I felt like the Holy Spirit said to me, David, your brokenness, because it was a broken open piece of bread. Your brokenness is, is beautiful to me. And I'm like, what? How can that be? You know, because it was so painful for me. And I remember writing, you know, a poem. And there's a stanza in there. And it says, although there are times we cannot understand how our suffering can be in his plan, we can still trust that he'll see us through. If we remind ourselves, God suffers too. That's a fact, Jack. Do you don't think God feels... Bible says that we do not have a high priest who is not touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He does feel. God knows what it is to have suffering and pain. Why? Because it broke his heart when we were lost. That's why. And you have John 3, 17 says, God didn't send his son into this world to condemn it, but he sent his son into this world to save it, you know, to save it, to seek and to save that which was lost. You know who that is? That's you. That's me. Don't think for one second God's heart was not broken over the fact that you were put through some sorrow. Jesus himself said, like we just pointed out there, in this world you will have trouble. But be not overcome because I've overcome the world. You have an eternity to look forward to. And so when they threaten you to take away your now, 
you know, at the cost of your eternity, don't pay the price. Do not pay the price. Now listen to what happened here. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and express, and the expression on his face changed. Isn't that interesting? See, when he was talking to him before, he was trying to smooth them into that compliance, right? Oh, well, if you do this, guys, it's going to be good. But if you don't, hey, you know, da, 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 da. Well, his expression changed full of fury. And it changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Wow. Tell you what. Now listen to this. And he commanded certain mighty men of his of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, like right where they stood. They just wound them up, and they cast them into a midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's command was so urgent and the fire exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed the men that were taking Shadrach. Get that! It was so burning hot that it scorched the guys that literally were throwing them into the fire. And as a result of the scorching, they themselves died. Now, the King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said to him, yes, that's right, King, true, we did. He said, look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Now let's, God made us some big time promises, didn't he? He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Now, it does not mean that we might, hey, God rescued Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He was right there. Now, a lot of times people say, yeah, but you know, God didn't heal me. God didn't heal my loved one. God didn't do this. God didn't do that. Guys, we are seeing it from this side of eternity not that side. I'll tell you what, I've thought this oftentimes. Do you know if you left this world and you entered into paradise, you entered into eternity, do you think you'd want to come back? A lot of people that have had these near-death experiences, they exclaimed that when they were there and they were in that, they, they were even begging God not to send them back. But God said, hey, your time's not yet. And of course they came back. Guys, have an eternal perspective. Don't get yourself wrapped up in accusing God of not being the loving, kind, merciful God that he is just because it doesn't turn out the way you think. Many are the plans of a man's heart. It's the Lord's purpose that prevails. God sees so much further down the road than you and I could possibly see. And his desire is to bless us, cause us to prosper, not to harm us, but to give us a future and a hope. Do you think the future that God has for you only consists of this life right here not on no way in fact you were made on purpose you were made for a purpose and think about it you have a beginning but you do not have an end that is who you are that is how you're knit together and have an eternal perspective now what ends up happening is this which is really quite wild it says you know because what happened is they pull him out of this fire. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning furnace, fiery furnace, and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. Boy, what a transition and attitude right there. Come out and can come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the midst of the fire. And the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose body the fire had no power. The hair of their head was not singed, and their garments affected, and the smell of fire was not even on them. They couldn't even smell the smoke on them. Guys, sometimes when our integrity is put to the test, you know, like they say, you know, your metal is tested. Do you know what? That might be the very catalyst that wins those people over that could not stand you, that did not have any desire to be anywhere. But they see, hey, this guy stood the test. His integrity is intact, and they made it. That girl, wow, can you imagine having to face that kind of humiliation and yet did it with her head held high? I'm telling you what, guys, you do not know who is watching your life. I have literally heard people say, you know, you might be the only Jesus that someone ever sees, literally. 
You know, they might not even ever walk into a church. They may never even hear someone speak or read the word of God, but you're living it out right in front of their face. You do not know the impact that you're making in their lives. I'll tell you something. I had a teacher, my biology teacher, and this is back in high school, of course. And, you know, I was a you know, believer even back then. And I'm, you know, professing my faith into, into Mount, in the face of absolute ridicule, of course. Do you know, 25 years later, I got a letter from that teacher sharing with me how later on in life she had given her heart to the Lord and she remembered back in those days. And she wrote me to let me know she was so encouraged to have become a person of faith. And I'll tell you guys, you just never know the impact that you're making. Do not discount your day of hardship or your day of small beginnings. Do not. God is right there in the midst of that situation. You better believe it. You know, if you've had a partner walk out on you and your heart is absolutely broken, I mean crushed, I know what that pain feels like and you feel like you have lost all purpose, you have lost all hope, you don't know how it's gonna turn around, you pain so real, emotional pain so real that it can be physically felt. I'm gonna tell you something, God can take you through that. Don't ever give in, don't ever give up, don't acquiesce, do not capitulate your character. Stand strong, stand tall, be encouraged. He is the healer. In fact, the Bible says, Jesus said the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the recovery of sight to the blind, you know, the acceptable year of the Lord, and get this, to heal the broken hearted. Broken hearts, God definitely cares about. You know, if you're facing, you know, some kind of situation there at work, God's in the midst of that. You might even lose that job. Don't worry about it. God has something else for you. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. And the people afterwards, you ask them afterwards, you know, they look back and think, you know, if that never happened, I'd never be in the great position of blessing that I am now. Your tomorrow is coming and your tomorrow is in his hands. Think about that. Meditate on that. Have faith and believe it. You are not alone in your circumstance. He made a promise. He will never leave us and never forsake us. Now, that is a physical story. 4,000 years ago, God demonstrating his faithfulness to those three young men changed an entire nation. And Nebuchadnezzar issued laws after the fact that no one is to, you know, diss this religion, you know, this Religion, this, this worship of the God that these men had and really talking about a relationship they have with their God. I'm telling you, you can make a major impact. Just don't give up. Have your integrity. Keep it intact. Don't acquiesce to what's coming, guys. Some hard times may very well be coming, but we can be ready for them in here and in here. And I want to share that with you. I thought it was just timely. I really believe that God wanted to just deliver that message to us. Now, before you go, let me just bless you. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you that your presence is right there. In a, and you said you're a very present help in time of trouble. And Lord, for anyone who is going through circumstances right now where they need to know that you're there, I pray you impress that upon them. God, let them not fear the cost of standing strong. And Lord, for those of us that are there, that may very well in the near future face situations, God, I pray that we would remember that this would be seated deep down in our spirit so that when these times come, we can stand, oh God, and not just bow down and fall, but we can be people of character and integrity and be built up in the Holy Spirit. And Lord, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just speak into their life that your power and your anointing and your presence will be with them and on them so that they can stand strong because we overcome, as the word says, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Oh God, I thank you. You're giving us a testimony. And so Lord, just infuse them with that hope in right now in the mighty precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, I sure hope you got some amazing encouragement out of that. And I'll tell you what, big things are happening in this space, that's for sure. And I can't wait till next week, Monday, and of course, going forward to see what takes place. But keep these thoughts in mind. Don't let them push you into capitulation, no matter what the circumstances. And guys, I sure hope you're having an amazing Sunday. And until later on, till next week, have a fabulous one and take care.